Well, in this video, we are going to explain how to solder surface mount components. We have this board, which is quite delicate, a board very similar to what inverter boards are. We have SMD components, which are found in many inverter boards and need to be replaced when they are damaged. We are going to replace an SMD component, a resistor specifically, but I will teach you how to know the value of these resistors. Well, let's observe one of the resistors we have here. Specifically, let's observe this resistor. Let's do better with this one we have here. This resistor has a value that is indicated by the numbers that are printed on its body. And what are the numbers that are printed? Well, you can't see them because they are too small. I can't see them either. Well, maybe you can see them later with a larger screen, but I can't see them. So, what I'm going to do is use the microscope. By the way, I'll also show you how to use the microscope. We take the board out of the holder and with the microscope we will try to show the number of that resistor on the screen. It is the one we have here. This resistor. Look, it's a 102 resistor. The number it has printed is 1002. What does it mean? What value is it? Well, you are seeing its value upside down. I'll turn it over and you'll see it right side up. The value is 102. What does this mean? We are talking about 100 and we are going to add two zeros. That is what the numbers of these resistors mean. When they are four digits, the first three numbers tell us the value and the next number tells us how many zeros to add. We are talking about a resistor of 10000, a resistor of 10,000 ohms, 10K. If we find a resistor with only three numbers like this one, it is a resistor of 10 plus 2 zeros, or 1000, 1 K. But this one that we are going to work with is 10 K, and first of all we are going to measure it to see if everything is fine with its values. Let's see, let's try to show everything on screen. There we have the resistor, there we have the board, and on this side we are going to put the multimeter to be able to see the value. The first thing we are going to do with the soldering iron well cleaned is to reheat the soldering points of the resistor so that the varnish does not affect the measurement. There it is, there we heat it. And now we are going to make the measurement in ohms and let's see on the multimeter the value it gives us. There it is, we are talking about 10K. Perfect, this resistor is in good condition, but we are going to remove it anyway to be able to practice. There we can see the resistor in the microscope. We are going to remove it and practice soldering on the resistor. The way to remove it is directly with the soldering iron, so let's see if you can see the microscope on the screen. We are going to heat it from one side, we are going to heat it from the other. We are going to heat it from one side, from the other, and we are going to push it with the same soldering iron. If we see that it is difficult to remove, the only thing we have to do is apply new solder a small drop and in this way it will be much easier to reheat and be able to remove it. We are pushing it, of course, you will remove it when the resistor is no longer useful to us, that is why you can heat without problems. But even in this resistor we are going to remove it and use it again also so that you can see that they do not get damaged either. Well, let's observe the resistor. We have it here, right? This is the resistor. Perfect, we already have it out.
Here we have the 10K resistor. So you can see how this resistor is. I'm going to show it to you from the bottom. I'm going to lift it with the tweezers and I'm going to show you the bottom side. There you can see it. At the ends where they have the contacts. As you can see in the camera, they are very small. And when you buy them, in fact, you can put now in the search of AliExpress SMD resistor 102 and you will see that they come in a kind of blisters where there are many resistors. It's approximate cost, 50 cents of a dollar for 100 resistors, so they are very economical. So, we were able to remove the resistor and carefully we will keep it for later to be able to put it back. But what we are going to do now is to clean this area where we are going to put back the same resistor, but for this we will no longer use the microscope, but we will be using directly the holder of the board. And zooming in as much as we can. Very well, let's observe well what we are going to do now because these steps are very important for working with this type of surface mount components. The key is to clean perfectly the area where the new component is going to be soldered. It has to be perfectly clean and now you will see how we do it. The main thing is to clean that area well. We are going to use for this, not the vacuum desoldering iron because it could absorb some components since they are so small, but we are going to use the desoldering mesh or the desoldering tape. We will support it well and heat it a lot. And we continue cleaning well. There we have the area quite clean, there it can be seen, and we also use isopropyl alcohol. And so the area of the SMD component has to be left as you are seeing, it has to be impeccable to be able to place the new piece. Let's do a quick measurement now to see if there are any components that are short-circuiting any peripheral components. Let's measure resistance. Well, we don't have any value. Well, we don't have a perfect value. We're ready to put in our new component now, but in our case, we're going to put in the exact same one. So you can see that even though these resistors seem very delicate, they actually hold up quite well and can be desoldered and resoldered. Of course with a soldering iron that heats up to the right temperature and also not overheating the component, but just the right amount needed. We'll bring the component close, we'll have it very close to the area to place, and we'll put a small drop of tin on one side, but it has to be very little. We bring the component close and then we won't hold it with our hand, but with some tool. I like to take my time so that these components are well arranged as much as possible. next to it is indifferent. Well, there we have the resistor placed on one side, and now we'll solder on the other. Perfect. Very well, we try to make it as good as possible and we'll take a measurement to see that the resistor is correct and that it hasn't been damaged either. 
We'll take this measurement and the value that it gives us on the screen is 10K. Of course, there's always a little more or a little less because they're not high precision resistors, but it's completely tolerable. Very well, there we have our CMD component placed back in its place. We hope this step-by-step -step video is helpful for you when you have to do these solders that are delicate but possible. Remember that in inverter boards we have many surface mount components and sensor areas and power zones of the IGBTs in many areas. Please leave a comment if you have any questions.